Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be making review campaigns that only generate five stars and get rid of the bad reviews that are below five stars. So, hello, my name is Parker Warren, and if you don't know me, I own a company called PWA Media. It's a marketing agency. We help build and scale medical clinics, and we put in proven frameworks that work and scale them like absolutely crazy. And this is one of them that we found a lot of success with because if you get a bunch of good reviews, it helps with your local SEO. So if you're running both of these systems, it can be a very good effect. So without further ado, I'm going to kind of show you how to build out this workflow. So first I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then after that I'm going to show you how to build it out. So first things first, it's, I it's not a very big deal of a workflow, like it's not a lot of steps. It probably takes like 30 minutes if you're fast about it, but first thing you want to do is get your trigger. So the trigger is going to be whatever you are triggering the campaign to start with. So like someone shows up, so for instance, we... We charge people per show up, not just for the lead. So when someone shows up, they get automatically put into this workflow and they get these tags added to them. So I'm gonna kind of go over how this works. So they'll get these tags added to them, the member tag, the strainer tag, and then it'll wait 30 days. So this is, after they've showed up, it'll wait some time. So if it's like, a, for us, it's kind of like a weekly prescription because it's weight loss and it's, it's like, it's shot. So we want to give them some time to kind of experience the product and get a full review of it. So for us, it's 30 days, but this is kind of niche specific, so you're gonna to want to make sure you have this be niche specific. So then, after 30 days, you'll send them an SMS message, and it'll just be a hey contact name. It's blank with the clinic, and we're working on improving our clinic. Would really appreciate your input. If you have a few seconds, could you rate us one to five? One being the worst, five being the best. Just respond with the number you think we deserve. Thank you very much. That's all you gotta do, and then you wait for the member to respond. Now, this is where the cool stuff comes in, and this is why we call it the strainer review. Because, here, let me pull up the picture real quick. So when you see a strainer, it lets, like, the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. And so, picture, you're letting the good reviews in, and you're flushing out the bad reviews on this. So, at this point, you're going to make a condition, and it's going to be either 4 to 5 on the review. For You can have it just be 5, but I'd recommend 4 to 5, because sometimes people will do 4s, and it's not a bad review. It's still a good review, so I'd, I'd add it just so you get more volume. But anyways, so you have zero to three over here, if they drop a zero to three, and four to five. And an important part of the message is you want them to only drop a number. You don't want it to be anything else because this condition is triggered off of just the number. Like, see, as you can see, it contains one, two, or three. That triggers this. And then it contains four or five. That triggers this. And so essentially what happens is if they don't trigger, if they don't do anything, then the action just ends because you don't really want to just keep spamming them to review you otherwise they might just go intentionally leave a bad one on your Google review page but if they leave a good one then you send them your Google my business review link or whatever review page you're trying to get up whether it's Trustpilot, Yelp, whatever it is you send it in this trigger link right here then you wait one day for the trigger link to be clicked and it, if they don't actually do the review then you send them one follow-up text and that's pretty much it for the four to five side and We've noticed people, they do tend, like if they enjoyed your service, they're more than happy to usually leave a review. So one follow-up text doesn't hurt. Now, zero to three, this is the cool part. So you just kind of say like, we're sorry to hear that. You know, give them the lip service, give them the whatever. And you send them a trigger link to a form. Now, when I go over the tutorial on how to make this, because I'm making it super two separate parts, I will show you how to make a form as well so you can fully build out your forms and have that available. And I'm trying to figure out how to give you guys snapshots so I can just give you guys the snapshot and you can download it into your Go High Level. So I'm going to have a link down below so you can use Go High Level. I think there's a 14 day free trial going on. So if you want to use that, the link will be below. But anyways, so you make the form and you send them the form. And this is so that their bad reviews will be sent to the form and the form gets sent to the business owner, which is over email, and it doesn't stick onto their Google review page. So you can pretty much efficiently fish for reviews without drawing any bad reviews to your client. And this is why this campaign is super valuable and important, and I pretty much implement it on every single client we get now because it's essentially zero risk and adds tons of value. So if this is all you came for in the video, this is all you should need. But if you are sticking around to the tutorial, then I will see you in the tutorial part in the next couple seconds here. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna start by making a form because this is gonna be pretty important because all the people that don't end up wanting to give you a good review, you're gonna wanna send them this form so they have something to do other than leave a review. So when I first go in to sites over here and then up here you can find forms and surveys. I prefer to do a survey for this, you can do a form. So you have like a track record of the answers but I don't really care to see the answers. So just go in here, make a survey. You can make it super simple, like it's super simple. Just how'd we do? We're sorry to hear you had a poor experience. Your feedback matters, blah, blah, blah. And then you just put an image here with the company logo. 
for the company that you're doing in the thank you page, obviously. So that's pretty much the forms. They're super easy. They take about two and a half seconds, form slash survey. You just start from scratch and then you literally drag and drop the bubbles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually make the strainer review campaign. So I have a fresh workflow right here and we're just going to call it strainer for video. All right. So, and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want something that triggers this workflow. So we're going to have opportunity created. Someone showed up. That's what's going to trigger this workflow. Sorry, one second. Opportunity created filters in pipeline, go out, pipeline stage. Now I'll explain all this in a second. So pretty much you're going to have certain pipelines for your automation. So this isn't going to look the exact same as yours. So you just need to make sure you have your own pipeline set up for where you want the people in that stage to enter into this workflow. So kind of figure that out with yourself and kind of the campaign you're doing, but I have it triggered for the show up. So when they show up at the clinic, we enter them into this workflow. It waits 30 days until it sends them the review stuff. So that 30 day window kind of lets them enjoy the service and then we send them that review. So it works really well in that regard. So now we're gonna add these tags so that we know who's in this, who's in this campaign. So existing member tag, save action, tag strainer. Save action. So now we know when someone's in this campaign, they're an existing member and they are part of the strainer campaign. Goodness. All right. Now we have our weight. This is pretty important because this is kind of, you're, you're predicting the, the path of your client's leads. So you're, you you got to make sure you, this is in, this is very niche specific. So we work, we work with medical clinics. So we kind of want to capture the review a couple weeks into when they've started their process and kind of had a minute to enjoy it with other niches. It's, Definitely be niche dependent. So you just got to make sure it works with your niche. Like, I know I've said that a lot, but it's very important. Otherwise, this thing kind of doesn't work as well as it does. So make sure you have an idea of kind of the client journey of your niche for sure. All right. So there's our wait. Now we are going to do the first SMS message. And I'm just going to be copying, pasting it from the other strainer campaign that I've made in the previous because I don't like just remaking the whole message. So feel free to use my message and copy and paste it for yourself. So here's that. So Pretty much we do a custom value, custom value, custom value, custom value. There's only four custom values that you have to go through and change for each one of your campaigns. So it makes it pretty easy to manage. So, hey, contact name, it's Jane Clinic. We're looking, we're working on improving our clinic and would really appreciate your input. If you have a few seconds, could you rate us on a scale of one to five, one being the worst and five being the best? Just respond with the number that you think we deserve. Thank you very much. And then you kind of the receptionist name or whatever. So very simple text, but it is the keystone of it all. So now we want to wait for the member to respond. So apply to SMS message one and save action. So now this is going to wait for them to respond to that message. So they're either going to drop us a one, a two or three or four or five. That's the only thing they're supposed to message us. And then this will happen. So then we want the if else conditions. Because this is going to pretty much make the entire system. This is where it starts deviating and you have two different workflow is kind of working in one. So first one you're going to want is the zero to three branch. And we're going to name the action name good or bad reply. Now, reply, sorry, contact replied contains input zero or applied contains one. And as you can see, you kind of just do this one, two, three, and you get those first couple done. So reply, applied message contains Two, add segment, replied message, contains three. And so that's the first part of the branch. Now you make the second branch. So we have four, two, five. I'm just going to save the action real quick. Hold up. It's acting up. Looks like you missed on some fields. Like said, oh, here we go. Contact reply, replied message, contains four, add segment, contact reply, replied message, contains five. And then we save it. Now we have our branch being made. So the none branch, this is just if the, for whatever reason, they don't respond with a number, they get put into the none branch and then there's nothing really you want to do with them because they're kind of messing up the whole workflow. And if you make the exception for one person it becomes the rule. So they kind of just kind of get zoned out. We only want to kind of give people the time of day that actually follow the message. So first one we'll do is we'll start with the four to five. So I'm going to copy and paste the message over here. So you're going to want to start with an SMS action. And here's that message. We're so happy to hear that contact name. If you don't mind, could you leave us a quick review? And then you put in your Google review link right here. And if you don't know what a trigger link is, you can just do it right here. These are all your trigger links. You can go in and make a trigger link inside of your, it's, it's, it should be in the same place you made the survey slash forms kind of that area, or it might be in the settings, but either way, yeah, you gotta make a trigger link with your Google review in it, and then you bring it into this. So as you can see, Google review link, quick Google review link. So we have a couple of SMS, 
Now we're going to want to wait one day for the trigger link to be clicked and kind of give them some time. You don't want to just immediately follow up like 12 hours after you kind of want to give them time to absorb the message and get to it. So contact reply, wait one day. There we go. One da, one day. And then we're going to add another condition here. And this one's going to be for the review link, whether it was clicked or not. So review link clicked. So I got to find this trigger link. One second. Okay. Sorry. I just figured that out. So essentially for this, I messed it up. You want to, instead of contact reply, you want to do trigger link clicked. That's why the pop-up wasn't happening down here when I was trying to figure it out. So you want trigger link clicked and then the trigger link you've selected and then do a timeout of one day. And then you do your if they or if else condition. And this is going to be for review link clicked. And then where I want to go to events, trigger link clicked, trigger link is, and then whichever link, which one was it? Oh, crap, I Google quick review link. So I have to do that again. Review link clicked. Oops, event, trigger link clicked is Google review quick link. Cool. And then we're going to add another branch. Review link not clicked. Events, trigger link clicked is not. And we should be good. Cool. And then we're going to add another wait step after the review link's not been clicked. And this is going to be a time delay of about 15 minutes just to give them a second. It isn't really necessary. I just kind of like it to keep the workflow nice. So you can kind of, you can honestly skip this, but I like it. It's just so I can see when they, when you go into execution locks, you can see, oh, condition, review link not clicked. And then it did the wait step. So you can kind of see the exact journey, even though like you can see it anyways, but I don't know. I'm just OCD. So that's just, that's just how I do it. And then we're going to add the final SMS text for the review link not being clicked. And this is just going to try to get them to look at it one more time. They've already shown that they like your service. They've already shown that they would be happy to leave a review. So you just want to get that one follow up on them. Be like, hey, let's get this done. And bada bing, bada boom. So yeah, you can copy and paste this message. Hi, contact first name. Anyway, you could spend 30 seconds to leave us a quick review. It really does help out. No worries. If not, here's the link if you have time. And then just that survey link. Or not survey link. This, this is the Google review link, not the survey. Sorry about that. Yeah. So pretty much our entire four to five pillar has been completely built out. So if you want to take a minute and just pause here and continue building that out, more well, than welcome to. Now we're going to build up the zero to three section. So we're going to start off with an SMS and we're going to copy and paste the message over for you guys. We give you everything here. So if we're terribly sorry to hear that. Could you please tell us on the form below? We are always looking to improve. Please tell us by your experience. Just trying to get them to open up. And honestly, it's, it's to help the business owner because the feedback is going to be pretty honest. So they're not going to hold back at all. So the business owner sees it and there's something wrong with the service. It'll give them a chance to fix it. So business owners really do like this system because they still are able to see the feedback from people that didn't like their service, but it just doesn't really you know, stick on the profile and make them look bad. So it's a, it's a win-win for everyone involved. So now we have our wait one day kind of like over here. This is going to be really clicked. This will be the, how do we do survey timeout? No timeout. Cool. Actually, yeah, I think we do add a timeout timeout one day. Sorry about that. I haven't made this strainer review campaign in months because I haven't really, I don't really remake the same campaigns over and over again, believe it or not. But yeah. So now we're going to do the if else, and this is going to be very similar to the four to five. It's like you pretty much just copy and paste the four to five side over to the zero to three side, but you just change out a few things. So review link clicked, and then you want to go over to events, trigger link clicked is how do we do survey for this one. Review link, not clicked events. Trigger link clicked is not. How do we do survey? Save action. Then you have this nice spread. Look at that. Looks good. All right. Then we have our, we have to build out this section. Wait. Again, this is like my OCD wait. This one isn't required at all, but it's my 15 minute random wait. So I can just see in the logs. Wait 15 minutes. And then finally, thanks for feedback. Now, if a lot of this doesn't make sense, always just build it out and then kind of do the test workflow and run it for yourself. Make sure everything works seamlessly and works for you because essentially this is this has been built for my business. So I'm sharing something that I've used in my business with you guys. So it's not going to work for every single business like out the box like you've seen with the, my exact messaging and everything. But this is it essentially. So if the review link is clicked, we just want to say thank you for kind of clicking on the review, taking time out of their day or not review link, but survey, this should say. So if the survey is clicked, then you're just kind of like, hey, we appreciate the feedback. We, we know that. We're trying to always improve as a company. So thank you a lot. And then that's the end of this customer journey right here. If the review link is not clicked, then we don't really care because like it's a bad review to begin with. So whatever, we're not going to follow up with them on a bad review. But yeah, so for the good review one though, you are going to want to follow up with them to get them to paste that review onto Google. So that's why those are the way they are. But if you guys have any questions about the Strainer review system and want me to do more systems in the future, please just drop it down below and let me know what you kind of see. But I hope this video helped you guys. And I hope that 
This added a lot of value to you guys. So you can add this into your own agencies and really give more value to your clients. Cause everyone just kind of does the same thing where they run a uh, retainer and they kind of just do some ad management. But if you really want to take your agency to the next step, you want to implement workflows that make your client's lives significantly easier and makes you really stand apart from the crowd. And that's kind of what this will do for you. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want a link to go high level, there will be one in the description for like a 14 day free trial. So you can have access to the same software I'm using, but yeah, you can take the knowledge from this video and use it for yourself. And I hope it helped you out a ton. All right. Bye.